Hey guys, Ashlyn here coming at you today with a bit of a beginner's guide. Now yesterday was the global launch of Clash Royale and I do have a few videos that I'll link in the description below for beginners. But for those who don't know, let's go ahead and review some basics of the game. So you can see on the screen I have here, we get a free chest every 3 hours and 45 minutes and we get a crown chest every time we get 10 crowns. These are the main ways you're going to be getting cards. Obviously you have the chest below that you win throughout winning the the matches you'll actually have a shot at getting a magical chest or a super magical chest as well down there now the king level is very important that dictates the number of hit points that your towers including your king tower has you get higher levels by getting achievements done you can see here watching a, uh, a TV Royale is an achievement so that should be the first thing you do when you download the game is watch a TV Royale ter uh, game and not only will you pick up hopefully valuable strategy you'll also pick up some experience in some gems so when you have higher level you get a higher level by upgrading cards and you can see here you can upgrade cards you can buy daily cards using gold gold you can get from chests or you can go ahead and buy them if you're a type of person who will spend a dollar or two on the game or three or four or five so anyway you can what we're gonna do today in today's video is have a little fun testing out a really basic deck now you can build a very powerful deck in this game without having to have all the cards unlocked or without necessarily having to use epic cards so we're gonna focus on the bone pit today the bone pit arena is the second arena that you get to after a goblin uh, actually uh, what are you a goblin stadium and then previous to that is just the training area so what you want to do is we'll use a combination of all the cards you never want to just use one arenas cards just because the cards are available at the uh, higher level arenas like I said doesn't necessarily mean they're stronger than basic cards I've seen people even in TV Royale meaning they're a top 100 player or so I've seen them have a lot of success success with basic cards. So what we'll do is we'll populate our deck with some, uh, we're not going to use the epics from the bone pit, we're going to use epics from earlier arenas, that way hopefully you have those cards. So we're going to play Goblin Barrel alongside the Witch, and let's play Goblins as well. So we'll swap him in for the Balloon, and now we have Goblins, uh, Spear Goblins, Minions, we have the Tombstone and the uh, Bomber Tower, those are from the Bone Pit. And then as the uh, as the epics, we have the Goblin Barrel, the Witch, the Giant, and the Minions will be uh, part of our, you know, Meat Shield combination. So this game is all about combinations and counters. Uh, you probably already know that, but the Giant and the Minion are actually a decent combination, depending on the type of deck your opponent has. So let's play one of my clan mates here. Uh, let's go ahead and see what Bucci has in store for us. So we're going to play this very basic deck. We'll see what he has. He might have some of the new cards, but uh, we'll be ready for him, hopefully. So we're going to start out with a Witch. Now, a very basic thing to do here is to... Cons oh, he's playing a Mortar, so we have to we have to get the Mortar down immediately. So Some people think it's a little bit of a cheesy card, but it's certainly effective. So we need to get that down because Mortars can target and do a lot of damage to your Crown Towers. So in the right-hand lane, we have the Witch go into town. In the left-hand lane, we have the uh, the Giant followed by the Minion. So if you want to check out some strategy videos, I have a ton out, over 45 videos on Clash Royale now, all covering different decks, different strategies, different winning combinations. But when it all comes down to it, guys, this game is about Elixir conservation and using Elixir at the best moments in the match and at opportune times, mainly when your opponent is low on Elixir. So I was gonna put the bomber tower down I don't have a giant up right this second I need to counter that you, I mean, you can see I'm throwing everything I have at that mortar now this is kind of an unorthodox match because not a lot of people are playing the mortar as often as they were early in beta so uh, I wasn't ready for this in this deck to be honest with you guys but uh, you know uh, I'm the type of youtuber who does show losses so if we lose I'm not gonna delete it and only show wins but hopefully we'll win hopefully that won't be a uh, won't be a matter you can see I'm waiting right now I'm waiting to place. I'm not just spamming out my cards. I want to go ahead and counter his cards at the same time. So I'm wor okay. He just fireballed my uh, my tombstone. Tombstone is a really good counter to a uh, a hog rider. So you should know the basic cards and you should know their counters. I'm getting a little distracted here. Unfortunately, he's got a few hundred. I got 450 hit points left on my left hand tower, and that bomber tower is in a bad location. So after this most recent update. Those people who are watching for the first time this channel, you probably won't know this, but oh boy, another mortar here. Uh, let's see what I can do on the left, and now and then he has the uh, the hog coming at me. So tombstone's a great counter for the hog. 
I have the giant going to town on that mortar, but he's going to get a little bit of damage down to my tower. I'm going to goblin barrel his left tower here. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, but he has a lot of good counters to this deck. I, my, my goblins. So it's important to note that goblins and barbarians actually do a lot of damage to crown towers. So never just let them go unchecked. Uh, so I did a decent amount of damage to his right tower. Let's focus our uh, our attack on the right tower. Now, the last minute of every match, you guys probably already know this, but you get the double elixir. So things move at a much faster pace right now. I'm trying to throw everything I have at his right tower. If I can just get a goblin barrel up right now, I might be able to take it down. Uh, and the goblin barrel is just not coming up to me. Finally, it is up, but I don't have enough time right now. So I am going to lose this match, unfortunately. But... The deck doesn't necessarily mean it's it doesn't necessarily mean this is a bad deck. That is a big important lesson, right? So we'll play another match today. We'll see if we can pull off a win. Good game. Always best to wish your opponents a good game. Be a good sport. Oops, didn't have a chance to do that. We're playing Superman, Clark Kent. So the idea here, guys, is don't give up on a deck after one loss. You have to learn how to play the deck. It doesn't necessarily mean you're bad, even if you lose two or three in a row. You're gonna have your epic winning streaks, you're gonna have your epic losing streaks. So Having a defensive unit in your deck, like a Bomber Tower, an Inferno Tower, a Tesla, is always a good idea. It's not a must, but especially for beginners, it allows you a little bit of leeway. It doesn't You don't have to play a perfect match when you have a defensive unit down, because there's a lot of forgiveness in terms of you can actually uh, play defense, even if you play, for example, an Elixir, a card, and then it puts you really low on Elixir, then they come at you offensively. Having that defensive unit actually helps you a lot. Lot. So he has Poison, Clark Kent. Uh, poison is one of the new epic cards, and Poison's going to do a number on this deck as well, but it doesn't mean, that, again, that the deck is bad. I just made a mistake there placing the Goblins in the Poison. Let's go ahead and see if we can recoup here. So I'm going to place this Tombstone in the middle, and you'll see the Barbarians will be drawn to the middle. Now, playing defense, it's all about knowing the location to put things and putting them at the perfect timing. So you can see for 5 Elixir, I was able to counter that Baby Dragon, and now I'll throw a, uh, a Goblin Barrel. Hopefully I'll catch him low on Elixir. I did not. He had the Fireball. Now he must be low on Elixir. He probably has two or three. It's always a good idea to try to guesstimate how much Elixir your opponent has. Kind of a misplay there on my part, but it's okay. We're kind of trading blows right now. What we want to do here that we didn't have an opportunity to do in the first match is get a nice offensive push going. That means using our giant either at the beginning or at the end of our little push and then putting a bunch of goblins behind him and hopefully, you know, we can goblin barrel the other side. You can see where I dropped that bomber tower. It sucks that hog right in. He has the poison spell. The poison spell so powerful. Look at this. It's doing damage to my crown tower. It's doing damage to my defensive unit it took down my defense poison is absolutely insane I did this I did a uh, video a few days ago sp uh, highlighting and spotlighting if you will the poison card so check that out if you're interested in that card but it's doing a number on my deck today so I'm gonna put the bomber tower down again here uh, and we'll go ahead and defend against this hog rider and this baby dragon baby dragons do splash damage from the air so you have to have air targeting troops in your deck and you have to be careful about where you place them or if you put them in the line of sight of that baby dragon they'll be toast so I snuck in a goblin barrel there I'm gonna place a witch a good idea in this game is don't play a card until you absolutely have to. So always try to keep a few leftover elixir after you place a card. Right now I'm kind of spamming everything because he's coming at me really heavy on the right hand lane there. I'm going to defend all right here. I need to get something going offensively. My main offensive weapon is the giant and the minion combination, which I still haven't been able to get off. But other than that, the goblin barrel keeps them on their toes. We're into overtime right now. I need to step up my game. Don't want to have a two-loss video, and it's only going to be two matches in this video. So, let's see. The bomber tower is stopping him. Another poison. Ugh! The witch is slow moving, so slow moving, that the uh, the poison does really well against her. You can see she is dead -o right now. Oh, no. Okay, what am I going to do here? Let's reload bomb tower. That's going to suck in the hog. Another poison. Oh, my God. This poison spell is killing me, guys. Uh, and a fireball. Okay. It's time, to, it's time to get something going here. Okay, goblin barrel. Let's see what he has to that. Nothing big. Okay, this is going to be it, guys. I'm going to mount my offensive run here. We're going to put the witch 
and we're gonna we're gonna play defense a little bit here and then we're gonna put the giant down we're gonna have to we need to get something going here so this is the giant witch combination which I haven't been able to get off yet so you can see I'm spamming down these goblins and the reason I'm doing that right now is because the dragon the baby dragon and the bomber tower are actually targeting my giant so the rest of my troops are gonna go unharmed and this might be it guys boom okay we got it it wasn't convincing, but a one nothing crown uh, a win is still a win nonetheless. So guys, I hope you were able to pick up a, uh, a strategic tip here and there throughout this episode. If you want to check out the rest of my episodes, check out my Clash Royale playlist. And check me streaming Clash Royale every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Mob Crush. That link is also in the description below. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care. We don't play for fame, we don't play for cash. Just play for the glory and the crash of the ash